Hey, I'm Hannah and I'm a doctor with type 1 diabetes. I've had type 1 diabetes for 20 years and it's amazing how much technology has changed. When I was diagnosed in 2006, we just had insulin pens and finger sticks. Insulin pumps were starting to come around, but not super common, certainly not as common as they are now. I've really been interested in technology since the beginning and I've tried quite a bit of the pumps on the market. Today I wanna to tell you which new technology I am most excited about. And this is truthfully the first time I've been excited about an upcoming technology in a long time. When continuous glucose monitors first started coming out and being more available and covered by insurance to wear at home for people, that was an exciting time. I was in the middle of college when I first got on my CGM and didn't really understand how positively impactful that was going to be until I started it. But now that I'm in the know and I'm reading the literature about diabetes technology more often, this upcoming insulin pump is the one that I have been excited about for over a year and remains the number one thing I'm interested in coming out here in the future. What's exciting is that it's already passed the FDA approval process and it should be on the market here in a couple of months. So we're very close to having this. And this insulin pump is the Twist insulin pump. It's created by SQL MedTech. And what I really like about this insulin pump is that it uses the tide pool algorithm. And for those of you that aren't familiar with tide pool, I want to give you the backstory because I think it really describes why I'm so excited about this. When I was in residency in my internship training, I decided to try a non FDA approved type of pumping insulin called looping. And there's a really big community for looping. And essentially what it is, is creating an app on your phone that you have to code yourself and connect. And you basically hack into your insulin pump. There are a couple different ones that works with, but I use the Omnipod Dash. And I was able to change the settings of my Omnipod Dash in order to really optimize my blood sugar. I was able to do a lot more with setting adjustments than I was if I was just using the regular PDM that Omnipod came with at the time. And what it did is now what is more common for different insulin pumps on the market, but it essentially had this auto mode where it allowed you to increase your basal rate of insulin temporarily as your blood sugar was spiking and it would decrease your basal rate of insulin as you were dropping to prevent the low from going as low or prevent the drop. And it did a really good job of this. What was so cool is that when I was in training, I was able to create the system and use it and I could actually set it up on my Apple Watch and he was able to bolus insulin from my Apple Watch. And I remember running to different patient rooms or working night shifts and I would see my blood sugar was running high. I could do a correction while I was walking to go see a patient in the hospital. That was amazing. I remember having significantly less lows. It was really a great system. Now, at the time when I did, this was a little while ago, it was pretty tedious to keep up the technology. I remember having to copy code into the app in different places on my computer in order to create this setup. And troubleshooting it from a technology perspective was a lot harder for me and a lot more tedious. You couldn't just call a company because this was a non-FDA approved system. Now, I believe that it's gotten a lot better and a lot of people still use looping and absolutely love it, but that algorithm Rhythm that was created to create this looping system was adopted by this company called Tidepool that then learned how to optimize it and test it and get FDA approved for using this algorithm to help people manage their blood sugar. And after they got FDA approved for the algorithm, they then had to find an insulin pump to get FDA approved to use them together. And then they had to get FDA approved to be able to use a specific continuous glucose monitor with it for the data. And so it's been a long process for this to come out, but it was ultimately an algorithm that was designed by people with type one diabetes who were very motivated in optimizing their blood sugar. So this wasn't like lab hired physicians, hired research scientists trying to figure it out. This was grassroots people with type one diabetes who really wanted what the best of technology could offer before it came out. And that's where it started. And now we've gotten to a place where it can be a lot more accessible and even covered by insurance for people. And so that is why I'm so excited because I feel strongly that this algorithm works very well. It's incredibly safe and it has a very low target blood glucose, a lot lower than what's available by Omnipod or Tandem right now. And so that's really amazing. I think that the 
ability to optimize blood glucose management on this insulin pump will create space for lower target A1Cs, lower standard deviations, more in range to average blood glucose levels than some of the other pumps on the market because of what it allows you to do. Now, not everybody wants that. Not everybody wants the extra settings. This pump isn't going to be the best for everybody out there with type 1 diabetes, but right now in the market of insulin pumps that have the kind of auto mode, which would be the Medtronic Tandem and Omnipod here in the US, and now Islet, is that there's restrictions on how managed we can get our blood glucose. I wear the Omnipod 5 and tried that algorithm out for about a year, and there were so many good things about it, but one thing that made me not want to continue it was that every morning I would wake up flatline at 120. Now that's actually pretty great, but for someone without type 1 diabetes and healthy blood sugar to wake up at would might be like flatline 85. So quite a difference. And I really wanted to have a different fasting blood glucose level since I've learned how to manipulate insulin in a way where I feel like that's safe for me. And so Omnipod 5 didn't allow me to optimize my blood glucose management as much as I wanted to, or at least I wasn't able to figure out how to do it with Omnipod 5. I've heard of people who have, who can get an A1C in the mid fives on Omnipod 5, and that's awesome. I personally haven't figured that out, but I know that with a twist pump, it's gonna be a lot more intuitive and easier, and there's gonna be more adjustments that I can make. What's also great about this twist pump that makes it different than others on the market is that it can predict a block in the flow of insulin through the tubing at a much more sensitive threshold than other pumps on the market. Actually, what they market is nine times more sensitive, meaning that it's going to alert you if there's trouble with you getting the insulin way sooner than some of the others. And this is really helpful for preventing high blood sugars from a bad pump side or a kink in the tubing, also for preventing DKA, which I just created another video about why that's so important. But really what we see is that understanding and troubleshooting technical errors around insulin pumps is a really big block for a lot of people to want to be on an insulin pump or to want to try one in the first place. It's because when we have diabetes, we have to rely on getting insulin. So importantly, that putting a piece of technology that's not always 100% reliable in the middle of that feels too scary. And it makes sense to feel that way. But I think that for people who are concerned, this pump is going to be a safer first step or maybe a safer feeling first step to moving towards the use of technology, which I think is a good choice for many reasons, because it can take away so much of the actionable steps needed to optimize blood glucose levels. So the algorithm by tide pool in the twist pump is going to have that automated insulin adjustment, increasing or decreasing the basal insulin or giving corrections when the blood sugar is out of range. It's also going to allow for different types of mealtime boluses. It's gonna account for faster acting carbs versus higher fat, slower digesting meals, which is really cool. What I also love about the twist pump is it's gonna give you flexibility in bolusing. So it allows you to bolus from the pump, it allows you to bolus from your phone, and it allows you to bolus from an Apple Watch, which again, if you have a busy active lifestyle, is so amazing. I remember when I had bolusing capabilities on my Apple Watch, years and years ago, it really did help me correct faster because instead of finishing up my meeting or finishing up my walk and then taking the correction, I was able to do it in the moment that I got the alert that I was out of range when it was appropriate to take a correction. And that really helped me to prevent higher blood sugars from lasting as long as they did or just correct myself back to a range I would prefer to be in sooner. The last piece about the twist pump is that it will collaborate right now with the Freestyle Libre Plus sensor. And for a lot of people with type 1 diabetes, they are diehard Dexcom fans. They love Dexcom. They've only ever been on Dexcom. And as a person with frequently changing insurance plans. I've had to go back and forth between Dexcom and Freestyle Libre quite a bit, especially over the last three years or so. And what I have found in my personal experience, now this isn't data interpretation, so this isn't the physician answer, this is just my personal perspective, is that I find the, the Freestyle Libre to feel about as accurate as the Dexcom G7. Now I feel like out of the Dexcom G7, the Dexcom G6, and the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus, I had the fewest errors, the fewest gaps in data on my graph, 
and the fewest sites that I had to take out early with the Dexcom G6. Like by far, that's just where I had the most consistent, most calibrated data. I like that we had the opportunity to calibrate it. The G7, I do have more gaps in data. I do have more sensors that are off. I do have more sensors that fall off for some reason earlier, a day or two early. That's just what I've noticed personally. That's about how I felt with the Libre 3. Actually, I've never had problems with the Libre 3 Plus falling off. It's always only been the gaps in the data on the graph where it won't read for a little bit. I also tend to have more compression lows with the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus and the G7 personally that I've learned placement makes a big difference for me with, but that's also something that I've seen. And so for me, I think that if you're comfortable with the G7, personally, it just feels about the same as the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus. So if you've heard bad things about it in my personal experience, I feel like they're apples to apples. And so that makes me comfortable going back to the 3 Plus for the twist, which I absolutely plan to do. This is the insulin pump that I will try next. There's no question. I've been, I've been waiting for it for quite a while. So I'm gonna link their website below so you can learn more. There are some awesome technology videos out there about it specifically that show you the features and what it looks like that you may be interested in. I feel really excited. I want people to know about this because good things are happening in the world of type one diabetes and technology. And I just feel like the story of Tidepool is such a breakthrough for They had this campaign, we are not waiting. And here we are, we're not waiting anymore. And not only are we at a place where we can have the technology that we want to use, we are on the precipice of distributing it to people where it can be covered under insurance and it can be FDA approved and we can have a company to help us troubleshoot tech problems. And I just think it's such a beautiful thing for the world. If you have questions or if you want any more specifics, I'll share with you what I know. And then again, I'll link the website. Thanks for sticking to the end. And if you're interested in more type one diabetes mindset support, I have an online course coming out here in a couple weeks that's really designed to help people with type one diabetes optimize their mindset, whether that's working through burnout, understanding how to break through kind of barriers or limitations we put on ourselves with type one diabetes, turn off the stress that comes every time we hear a high or low alarm where we feel a sense of shame or irritation and really figure out how we want to create a relationship with type 1 diabetes that feels good and how to do that and figure out what works best for you because it's not the same for all of us. So if you're interested, I'll also have the wait list for the course below. I promise not to email you too much. We'll just let you know as soon as that's available in case you're interested in signing up. Thanks so much for sticking to the end and I hope to see you on the next one.